Welcome back to The Savvy Psychologist. This week, there is big news. I'm proud to announce that The Savvy Psychologist was hand-selected by iTunes editors as one of the best of 2014 podcasts. So check it out at itunes.com slash bestpodcasts2014. And the only thing more surreal than making the list is that I'm between Ice T and RuPaul, which I'm guessing is the only time that will ever happen. Anyway, I hereby award all of you best listeners ever. Thanks for listening. Thank you for your support on social media. And be sure to subscribe. 2015 will be even better. Loneliness afflicts millions of Americans. And the holidays are particularly hard for those who socially feel stuck out in the cold. This time of year, every commercial, magazine cover, and store window sends the message that from Thanksgiving through New Year's, we should be attending festive holiday parties, merrily clinking champagne flutes, and spending time with people. Lots and lots of people. But Americans are a lonely bunch. Back in 2004, a large-scale survey found that one in four Americans had no close friends at all. And I'll bet you a lonely partridge in a pear tree that the percentage is even higher now. With so many people feeling isolated, you'd think everybody would be talking about it, but no one does. There's a stigma to admitting you're starved for company. So defined, loneliness is perceived social isolation. It's perceived because you can feel totally alone in the midst of a crowd, or you can feel connected and supported even when you're by yourself. But even if loneliness is perceived, there are lots of lonely people out there. Entrepreneurial sorts, for better or worse, have even started professional cuddling businesses. Yes, have someone come to your house and hold you for an hour. There's even an app to match you with others in your area who just want to cuddle. That's definitely not an official tip, but let's turn to those now. This week, we'll cover eight ways to feel more connected. Expanding and then maintaining a social circle takes work and time, but rest assured, your people are out there. So let's start with tip number one. Pick up where you left off. Start with your existing but neglected social circle. It's easier to reconnect with old friends than to start from scratch. Think about who you've lost touch with. If they're far away, give them an old-fashioned phone call to wish them happy holidays and catch up. If they're local, so much the better. Invite them out for dessert or a drink, catch a holiday tree lighting, or whatever strikes your fancy. Personally, I say try to avoid movies. The whole point is to talk and catch up, not stare at a screen together. If you're hesitant to contact somebody after some time away, turn the tables. How would you react if they called you? Probably delighted. Assume the same for them and make the call. Tip number two, challenge your expectation of rejection. The lonely among us, it turns out, see the world differently. In a 2014 study, lonely and non-lonely college students watched video clips of lunchtime at college dining halls. In the scenes, there were always both positive and negative social interactions happening at any given time. The study participant might see positive interactions where someone smiles, nods while a friend talks, or leans into a conversation. But they might also see negative interactions, like someone turning his back or ignoring another person. But here's where it gets really interesting. Researchers used eye-tracking technology to see what parts of the scenes the study participants focused on, and lonely individuals immediately fixated on the negative interactions. They picked up on signs of potential rejection right away, perhaps better to avoid it and protect themselves. And this makes sense. If you're already feeling vulnerable, you're naturally on guard for situations that could kick you when you're down. But zeroing in on threat means that when you're lonely, you see potential rejection everywhere. But here's the thing. The fears of lonely people don't play out. Even though lonely people anticipate rejection, several other studies find they don't actually get rejected. Instead, their expectation of rejection leads to avoidance or half-hearted attempts at socializing, which in turn makes others believe they're simply not interested. Basically, it's a big misunderstanding on both sides. So what to do? Well, first, tip number three. Expect some false starts. When you're lonely, it's natural to get a little desperate. Add the aforementioned tendency to expect rejection, and we all start acting a little awkward when we're lonely. But rest assured, it's not just you. Acting weird when you're lonely is so common it has a name, social evasion. When we perceive threat, we stay on the sidelines, where at least we know we're safe, even if it leaves us lonely. So as you try to chip away at your loneliness, 
Forgive yourself if you catch yourself in social evasion. And then tip number four, remember you don't have to be the life of the party. You may worry you're lonely because you're too quiet, too introverted, or too shy. Luckily, the opposite of loneliness is not hard partying extroversion. You don't have to change your personality to find your people. Nothing is wrong with you. The only thing you probably shouldn't be is passive. Not making eye contact, sitting in the corner, or not showing up in the first place sends the message that you're not interested. But fear not. You can be actively engaged by listening attentively, asking questions, and simply being agreeable. You don't have to be the life of the party. You just have to be present and pleasant. Next is tip number five. Keep showing up. We've talked about this on the podcast before. So let's pretend you decide to volunteer to try to meet people. Great choice. You reap the rewards of social interaction and altruism in one fell swoop. But here's the rub. You're looking to feel better not just by doing good things. If that was your aim, you could just donate money online from home. But by connecting with others. So if you volunteer, do it regularly at the same place, same time, with the same people. No one-time events or drop-in classes where people change constantly. And then keep showing up. I've said this before, but give any new social endeavor at least a season or around three or four months. If after that you don't like it or you haven't met anyone, you can throw in the towel, but hang in there until then. Repetition is key. The biggest reason people are friends, it's not commonalities, it's proximity. Again, keep showing up. Tip number six, join a group and then help lead it. It's cliche, but from road biking to quilting, there is something out there for you. You could join a co-op garden, a religious study group, a community theater. Again, a ready-made group where the same people show up repeatedly is your best bet. Then, once you've established yourself, try to take on a leadership role. Having a role to play is a blessing for the shy among us because it requires less social improvising. You'll have a set of duties and a reason to connect with everyone, even if it's just to remind them to pay their quarterly dues or encourage them to donate to the food drive. Tip number seven, build in guaranteed talk time. Take a lesson. Sign up for one-on-one dance lessons or music lessons where you have to talk to the instructor. Go into therapy where you talk with your therapist. It's not a substitute for friendship, of course, but an hour of talking with someone interested in your life, or at least your tango process, can't be bad. And tip number eight is use each bout of loneliness as a cue to make social plans. Most of us don't feel lonely all the time. Instead, it comes in waves. So each time loneliness flares, a weekend with no plans, a particularly sappy holiday special, use it as a cue to plan for the future. Whenever you feel lonesome, take action. Email a friend to meet up for a run next weekend or look at that schedule for the book group you've been meaning to join. It won't make company appear in the moment, but you'll have created something social to look forward to. And start by laying the groundwork this holiday season And by this time next year, you'll feel more connected and supported. And that is a reason to clink a champagne flute. If the Savvy Psychologist is useful to you, let me know by signing up for the forthcoming email newsletter. Go to quickanddirtytips.com slash newsletters and sign up to get exclusive tips delivered straight to your inbox. Thank you so much for listening. I'm Dr. Ellen Hendrickson. And next week, we'll tackle another tough topic and cover how to handle rejection. Until then, a transcript of the podcast and the references for the studies I mentioned are available 24-7 on quickanddirtytips.com slash savvy hyphen psychologist. And of course, the savvy psychologist is strictly for informational purposes and doesn't substitute for psychiatric care or psychotherapy by a licensed professional. But thank you so much for listening, and I will see you next week for a happier healthier mind.